With that, the meeting's yours, sir. Let me uh, begin broadcasting. Okay. We are, we are broadcasting, and now anybody else on the outside can come in if they want to. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order at 6 p.m. on June 1st. Uh, I would ask the clerk to do a roll call, please. Terry McGee? Yeah. Greg Labossan here? Hello. Gary Cody? Present and accounted for. Ann Dixon? Here. Deb Bacon? Here. Nicholas Gorham? Here. Edward Zika? Here. John Arnett? Here. Thank you. Okay, at this time, I'd like to ask everybody to stand for a pledge of allegiance, and I did bring my flag. That's something to look at. Okay. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America. and to the Republic, Republic for which it which stands, stands one nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. For all of you who wish to remain standing for the invocation, Lord, we that you help us guide us this evening to make the decisions that are best interest in the town of Coventry. Under your name, I ask that you help us. Amen. 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 We have an evacuation plan. So at this time, public is able to watch this meeting be alive. Uh, I hope this meeting finds everybody safe. Today is the first day of the state's phase two reopening as some of the restrictions are going to be eased. We still are not able to hold regular council meetings, but hopefully soon. The town administration is working diligently to keep town hall running and in constant communication with the state to push for information on the municipalities. I too have been meeting with the town manager daily to keep abreast of our situation. So hopefully we'll start to see some kind of normalcy in the very near future. Okay, the next item on the agenda would be the approval of town council minutes for May 5th, 2020. Uh, we've all had a chance to look at these minutes. Does anybody have any questions or comments concerning these? Seeing um, none. Mr. Okay. President, excuse me, Mr. President, I do have a couple of comments. Okay, uh, um, Council, go ahead. Thank you. I reviewed the minutes and I do want to submit a couple of changes to our clerk and um, I will submit them as soon as the meeting is over. It has okay. to do with comments re related to me. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if nobody else has any comments or questions, uh, the chair will obtain a motion to accept the minutes. Motion to approve with the changes that Ann is going to submit. Okay, we have a motion. Is that Greg? You that? Uh, I You're not coming in, your voice is not coming in, Greg. Oh, wow. Uh, All right, now I got it. Now I got it. Okay. I'll, I'll second. Okay. Yeah, so we're coming in a little choppy, but yeah, we have a second. So, uh, Madam Clerk, we'll do a roll call vote, please. Harry McGee? Yes. Greg LaBorson here? Yes. Gary Cody? Yes. Ann Dixon? Yes. Deborah Bacon? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Your motion carries. Uh, minutes were approved. The next item on the agenda would be. Uh, so item B, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, would you read uh, B1? Approval of National Grid Verizon Pole Location Request, Ledge Road. Okay, I actually think... Oh, what happened? Something's happened on the screen. I don't know. I don't see any... Yeah, okay. Ed, put up, Ed put up the map with the, with the uh, pole location on it. Yeah, I do see it. Oh, yes. Okay, uh, we've had a chance to look at it. Uh, is there any questions on it? It's pretty standard. We've done uh, these quite a bit uh, through National Town Manager. And I, is there any questions uh, on this poll location? I do not have any questions. Okay, I, I, hearing none, uh, I mean, this is a pretty standard thing. Uh, Mr. Manager, do you have any comments on it? Mr. Manager? I think I got you off mute. You're muted. Unmute. Got it. All right. Now this is this is just one of the normal ones we get. 
They're going to widen out the road, so they're going to take two poles out and put three in, move them off to the side a bit. Uh, and I showed you the location where on Ledge Road and uh, normal routine that we get. This has actually been in the hopper since just before the COVID situation developed. That's why I wanted to get it in tonight and uh, get it done. Okay. Uh, I think it's pretty cut and dry unless there's any questions. Uh, okay. I see uh, Ms. Bacon has a question. Just, just quick, is this the same road that um, we approved prior to COVID? Or was it early, like January, February? Is this the same road where we have National Grid? I, I don't believe we had one on, on ledge before this. We could we have. I, there was a gentleman that, that was objecting to the poll location, so I just didn't know if this was the same road. No, no, no. That one was a gentleman with, that lived across the street. He was worried about... Uh, it was going to go on to his property. Okay. All right. So no issues with that? No. That? Nope, not at all. All right. Thank you. Yeah, uh, that was Leo Roy. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lavasian. and thank you, Ms. Bacon. Uh, we'll, uh, with that being said, we'll uh, she entertain a motion. I make a motion to accept the motion for the approval of National Grid Verizon poll location request on Ledge Road. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have a second. All in favor, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Harry McGee? Yes. Greg Labossonier? Yes. Gary Cody? Yes. Ann Dixon? Yes. Deborah Bacon? Yes. Okay, all approved. The motion carries. Okay, the next item on the agenda, Madam Clerk, would be B2. Would you be so kind? Appointing Ed. Edward Inman as the moderator for the FY 2020 Financial Town Meeting. Okay, uh, we uh, do not have a date yet. I, I mean, while well, we do have a tentative date, uh, but uh, we, he did a, a good job last year and we uh, approached him and asked him if he'd be willing to do it again this year and he, he accepted it. So uh, if there are any questions, uh, this is not a political appointment. He, like I said, he did a good job last year with maintaining control and getting it. He's done us before, he's very well spoken. So are there any questions concerning uh, Ed Inman as moderator? Um, Mr. President, uh, the resolution says that the meeting will be held June 23rd, 2020. And I believe uh, that we should keep the date open because we're, okay. there's a little uncertainty concerning what date we will actually have this meeting. You know, you're, you're correct. I was looking at the agenda, not the actual resolution. So yeah, right now it's tentatively June 23rd, 2020. So, but I guess the question would be, uh, Ed Inman has moderator on that date, June 23rd, 2020. Okay, if uh, we don't have any objection, any questions, uh, we'll look for a motion. Well, uh, I mean, are you looking for a motion based on the resolution that says June 23rd, or yeah. would you like a, an amendment so that it is an open date? Well, right now we, it's scheduled for June 23rd. So, I mean, I just basically, that can be flexible. I just want to make sure we're going to appoint Ed Inman has my, if the date changes, you know, as long as his availability is still there. So right now the meeting is scheduled for June 23rd. So uh, we'll, we'll keep that for now. All right. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the appointment of Ed Inman as the moderator for the financial town meeting. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. I second the motion. We have a second. Before we go for a roll call vote, Mr. Solicitor, I just want to double check. Mrs. Dixon made a good point. The date is that flexible as long as we approve Mr. Inman has moderator. Uh, if the date does change, do we have to go through this whole thing again? No. Okay, that's all we need. Thank you. So uh, we have a motion and we have a second. Madam Clerk, would you take a roll call vote, please? Harry McGee? Yes. Greg LaBossonia? Yes. Gary Cody? Yes. Ann Dixon? Yes. Deborah Bacon? Yes. Okay, uh, motion carries. Uh, all approved. So the next item on the agenda, Madam Clerk, would be B3. Adopting the capital, municipal, and school department budgets for fiscal year 2020-2021 for presentation at a financial town meeting as per town charter section 8. Point eighteen little a. Okay, we've all received copies of the budget and uh, had a chance to review it. Uh, Ann Dixon, you say you have something? 
excuse me, I think the motion has to be made and seconded and then I'll be able to make comments. Well, we can make comments prior to uh, just concerning this more. All right, we'll look for a motion, that's fine. We have a motion to, uh, to uh, adopt the capital municipal school budget. Motion. We have a motion, do we have a second? You're, you're on mute, Greg, you're on mute. Okay. <laughs> okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Now we'll have discussion. Uh, Ms. Dixon, you have something to say? Yes, Mr. President, I make a motion to table the vote on B3 until June 22nd, 2020. I think this will provide three weeks that will may bring more clarity regarding the municipal and school budget for potential revenue and or expenses. And after the vote on this tabling, I would like to make a few comments. Okay, uh, we have another motion to table this. Uh, we, I, I do, in the light of everything that's going on and so many uncertainties, and uh, I, I, I think it's a good idea myself. So, uh, you know, we'll uh, give us more of an opportunity to have concrete. Uh, anyway, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Normally, once normally once a motion is seconded, the table is there no discussion. So once we table it, uh, what what uh, is it that Ann wants to bring up? Uh, Ann, what what uh, this uh, is that? Can can you do that now, or it needs yeah, to be we can do that now. Excuse, excuse me, Mr. President. Out of yes. consideration for Mrs. Dixon, I would like to withdraw my motion and let Mrs. Dixon's motion stand. Okay, we have a withdrawal from Councilman Cody, and we have a motion from Ms. Dixon. Uh, we have a second for Ms. Dixon's motion. Oh, I will definitely second that. Okay, now it's for discussion. Do we have to discuss everything in before we make a, take a vote? Okay, so you have any comments or anything to say on this? Um, yes, I do. Um, as I mentioned, this will provide us with three more weeks that may bring more clarity regarding the municipal and school budgets for potential revenue and or expenses. Um, I do believe, and I will state it publicly now, that we cannot provide a zero increase for the Coventry Public Schools. I understand that the fiscal future is uncertain. I understand the um, unemployment rate in Coventry currently, based on the latest statistics I found today, is 18.3%. And the sustainability of a quality of life is uncertain for many Coventry residents. However, I do believe that the savings the school had this past spring will provide additional funds to open schools based on guidelines that will be set by the state and by RIDE. We, of course, do not know if these funds will be enough, but they may be a start. I do believe that if the schools have no increase, they may be forced to have deficit spending, which will only increase the fiscal problems the following year when we know that the CTA contract will cost an additional $320,000, plus we do not know about the settlement with the police or the, S, uh, or the municipal employees union. Uh, a zero increase will definitely help some of our taxpayers, that is true. But the consequences of no increase may result in a very hefty, hefty increase the following year, just to meet the contractual obligations and anticipated operational expenses. It is like pay a little now or pay a lot more next year. I request that the town council members consider the importance of supporting education above a zero increase as proposed and be prepared for a discussion when we get together to discuss this again on June 22nd. And my second request is that the interim town manager convened the Coventry Budget Citizen Advisory Group, which was announced a few months ago, to make recommendations to the interim town manager and the council for revenue generation and expense reduction for the following fiscal year. So thank you. I ask my council persons to please consider um, what we might be able to do starting June 22nd at our vote. Thank you. Okay, Councilman Dixon, I respect your opinion. Has the we will have plenty of time when this uh, to discuss the budget as June 22nd comes by. But uh, your motion was to table it. So we will now, well, we have a motion and we have a second to table this matter until June 22nd. Madam, uh, yes, Ms. Bacon, you have a comment. I just, yeah, I do have one comment. Um, when are we going to be receiving the town manager's message and all the required reports, annual reports prior to? 
adopting the budget, or I mean not adopting, but voting on the budget? But I will uh, let him answer that, but I will. I did have a conversation with him today about that, and because of still so much volatile, uncertain numbers, he, he just wasn't able to give us the numbers, or he has them, but they're just they're really not solid, correct numbers at this time. So it is available, his potential budget, but there's so much more. That's why, you know, the request was made to, to prolong it. But he is definitely, Mr. Manager, you have any comments on that? Uh, you know, where I, the, I, the, uh, the managers or the interim managers budget message is obviously in limbo until I know exactly what the finalized numbers are in reference to state aid, all of those things. I don't want to put numbers in and deal with that until I know exactly what I've got. So to give you something and put it out there that isn't accurate, I just can't do that, Mrs. Bacon. That's why there's been a delay. As soon as we've got more knowledge from the state, I've got the format pretty much done. I, I'll be adding in the, the updated numbers and I will be getting that out to everyone at that point prior to when, whenever you're going to vote on, on this, uh, the, the uh, resolution to approve. To approve. Uh, but, I, but I'm also. Uh, I'm sorry. We will have ample time, Mr. Manager, to review it prior to any votes that we have to make. Am I correct? You will. You will. Okay. Mr. So Baker, we'll, we will also be receiving the Planning Commission report, the Impact Fee Study report, all these annual reports for the Charter and for the or ordinance. By chance, we will be receiving all of those. Mr. Manager. The planning, the planning report doesn't come from me. That comes from planning. They've been advised that we need to get that one done. Uh, the impact study, as far as that, the impact, we just have recently had our five-year review. Well, of it would be the impact fees, on the balance on all the impact fees. We're waiting. We, we actually gave, we gave you that report not that long ago on that one on the impact fees. John and I gave it uh, a while ago. But each I, department? I, you broke it down by each department? I believe we did. If not, I will make sure you get it this week. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have that. May I make a statement real fast on this? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, the impact fees, the impact fees are, as far as current balances, are broken down, and it is it is, re it is a monthly report. It's been a monthly report for quite since I've been there, um, and before. So, it is providing that statement balances. Yes, we, that could be provided at the next time that we we convene, and with the rest of the documentation. Well, okay, actually, thanks. send that to you tomorrow, Mrs. Bacon. You'll have that tomorrow morning. Yeah, all council members. Yes, when I send it to okay, one, and I send it to I had all. also, I had also asked for the personnel supplement. Are we, are we going to be receiving that? John? Personnel supplement? Yes, it would have um, the employee, doesn't provide the name unless you want to, department, bargaining unit, any increases, any bonuses, base salary. We, we normally get them every year. I can generate that report again. I, I can do that again. I, I, you do real, I am in the middle of transitioning over to a new system as well. So we've been working diligently on all that. So I'm pretty sure that I can pr get that report pretty quickly. I'll work on that. Mr. President. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Gorham. I just want to point out, it, it may be painfully obvious, and I, I respect um, the motion made by Council Member Dixon, but if you push this to uh, June 23rd, which is your, your choice as a council, um, it's inevitable that you actually are going to be pushing into the next fiscal year before you can have the financial town meeting. Because um, under the general laws, there's at least seven days notice required for our financial town meeting. And I think the charter may have a similar provision as well, which pushes us into July 1. And then, you know, depending on whether you want to have a meeting July 1, since it's so close to the 4th, we could be um, deeper in, you know, deeper into July than July 4th. We can do that. Um, it's just, uh, and it is an extraordinary year. We're probably not going to be alone. I just wanted to point it out. That's it. Okay, thank you. I, I just, myself, I just don't want to see a budget without having the exact numbers yet. So if, we, if we're forced to call another meeting at the beginning of July to do our job, then so be it. We have to do it. But I would rather have correct figures and know exactly what, we're, you know, what we need to talk about instead of voting on a budget that really we don't know yet. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Solicitor. Uh, Mr. President. Mr. Yes, sir. 
with those with pushing it to the 22nd, you would actually be holding the uh, the FTM on the on July 14th, and the all-day referendum would be on July 16th. Okay, even though that's that's, that allows time for the posting and uh, as well as getting back from uh, Office of Municipal Finance the approval for the posting. Okay, all right, great, thank you, uh, Miss Bacon. Did you have any more comments? Or were you all set? You're all set. Okay. Well, uh, we have a motion and we have a second. Madam Clerk, would you take a uh, roll call vote, please? Kerry McGee? Yes. Greg Lavoisonier? Yes. Gary Cody? Yes. Ann Dixon? Yes. Deborah Bacon? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Motion carries. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, the next item on the agenda would be C1, Madam Clerk. Would you please sit time? Application for fireworks, S&T fireworks, Shane Rakowski to be located at 792 Tyoke Avenue. Okay, uh, Mr. Mazika, do you have any comments or anything about that one? Uh, it's been a, uh, the, the police have no issues with that. Uh, zoning has no issues with it. Uh, I have none at all. I have no, no concerns. They've, uh, this isn't the first time they've done it and we've, we've never had an issue over there that I'm aware yeah, of. It's a yearly thing that they do for us. So, uh, all right. I don't have any questions on it. We always see the fireworks stands going up this time of year. So, uh, uh, if, is there any other council members that would have any questions or any concerns on this? Isn't Mr. President, isn't there a second one for the same exact permit? Uh, Yes, there is a second one. We could do a both, I guess. It would make a difference. Madam Clerk, that's a good idea. Madam Clerk, would you be uh, C2 also? Because it's the same thing. Application for fireworks, Keystone Novelties Distributors, LLC, John F. May, to be located at 6 Reservoir Road. Okay, and that, I believe, is right on the corner of Reservoir and Route 3. And we've had that one the last several years with no incident. So uh, if there's... Are there any questions concerning either one of these? Okay, Ms. Bacon. Just have, um, do you know what the hours are and days days of the week? Oh, be open? Did I overlook it? Uh, I don't believe that goes on the application on the hours that they will be open. Uh, yeah, it's not on the application. Uh, I mean, they usually, they close at reasonable times in the past. I mean, do, do we need to stress uh, certain hours? Uh, I, I don't recall in the past whether we've done that or not. We haven't done that in the past, Mr. Wrong. President. And they, they typically operate from around 10 o'clock in the morning until dark because they're not hooked up to electric. They don't have any lights to do business after dark or anything. So they usually operate from around 10 in the morning until dusk. And up until the 4th of July, seven days a week. Okay, Mr. Manager, that sounds reasonable. If you find any different, you know, from after speaking to them, we can approve this pending. If there's, if there's a drastic change or anything different, you would let us know, would you? We will do that. Okay, we can uh, approve it pending, you know, a, no discrepancy on the time. So does that satisfy you, or Ms. Bacon? Okay, all right, great. So we have uh, applications of uh, C1 and 2. The chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve, sir. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I second the motion. And we have a second. All in favor, Madam Clerk? Harry McGee? Yes. Greg Labossonier? Yes. Gary Cody? Yes. Ann Dixon? Yes. Deborah Bacon? Yes. Okay, all approved. Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is public comment. Mr. Wazikir, is there anybody looking for public comment at this time? Uh, now that uh, the end of the meeting, if anybody has a question, would like a comment, uh, if you raise your hand, you will be called on and unmuted so you can uh, ask the question. If you have any, state your name and address, uh, the usual that we do at all of our meetings. Uh, so if anybody is uh, interested in uh, a comment, please raise your hand now. And just to remind you, we, we do have a uh, meeting next Monday. Uh, I have, uh, at this time, I have one. I will uh, unmute and bring uh, Jill into the meeting. Okay, thank you. 
You're on, Jill. Hi, this is Jill and Shane Rakowski here from S&T's Fireworks. Hello. Hi, um, thank you for hearing our application. And Mr. Cody, if I'm saying it right, Gary, he gave basically the exact hours of operation that we always do, which is 10 a.m. typically till dark. That's correct. Okay, I thank you very much for coming on and clarifying that for us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, that was good. We had. Cool. <laughs> is there anybody else looking to? Uh... Uh, going once, going twice for the attendees. Does anyone else have a question or a comment? I should say. Seeing, seeing none. Um, Mr. President. Okay. I guess a motion to adjourn is in order. Motion to adjourn, Mr. President. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? I second the motion. We have a second. All in favor, Madam Clerk, please. Harry McGee. Yes. Greg Labossan here? Yes. Gary Cody? Yes. Ann Dixon? Yes. Deborah Bacon? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I thank you, everybody. Uh, be safe. Yeah, thank you, everybody, and be safe, and we'll uh, speak to you in the next meeting. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.